Hey guys, Jamie here. This video is going to be the first video in our stream tutorial series. In this video, we're just going to go over the basics, downloading the broadcasting software, getting your account connected. Okay, so basics. To stream, you need a broadcasting software. Basically, a broadcasting software is what people use to stream to platforms like Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. There's some platforms now that even have built-in streaming services. There are many broadcasting software options, but as of right now, the big names are OBS Studio, Streamlabs, and XSplit. There are also website-based broadcasters such as Restream and Melon that don't require you to download and install a program. But my recommendation is to use a program such as Streamlabs or OBS or XSplit and get used to something like that so you have more control over your content. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using Streamlabs. And as of right now in this stream tutorial series, I'm going to be focusing and teaching mainly with Streamlabs. I may decide to get into OBS or XSplit in the future. The end game is OBS, but as of right now, for you starting out, I'd recommend Streamlabs. Now, the reason I recommend Streamlabs is that Streamlabs is very plug and play, as they say. Again, if you're starting out, Streamlabs is very streamlined. It's easy to use. Now, again, the end goal is OBS Studio. But if you're starting out, I prefer you start with Streamlabs. You know, the analogy I like to use between Streamlabs and OBS is like the difference between an iPhone and a Samsung. Now, the analogies I like to use for the differences between Streamlabs and OBS to help you understand is think of Streamlabs like the iPhone. It just works. It's easy to use. The interface is easy to navigate. It just works. Now, with a phone like the Samsung Galaxy using an Android OS, you see, the thing about Samsung Galaxy users is they love the ability to customize. You know, you can go under the hood and tweak and do all these settings, the customizations that you can't do in an iPhone. And that's kind of like Streamlabs versus OBS Studios. At Streamlabs, you can basically do everything you need to do to stream, but you don't have as much access or control for under the hood settings like OBS Studio. Or think of another analogy. It's like Minecraft Bedrock Edition versus Java, right? Bedrock is... Basically, you could do everything in Java. The difference with Java is that the control of mods and all these different under the hood settings and things you can tweak. Now, some people might argue that you should just start out with OBS Studio because eventually you're gonna wanna be using that. So put up with the learning curve, get used to it, because then eventually you're gonna be there. Now, I disagree with that philosophy and everybody's got their own philosophy, but my teaching philosophy is get somebody acquainted with something easy, something familiar. Because if you're just starting out with something that you've never seen, you never touched, you never been around, the last thing you need is a big learning curve that's gonna discourage you. So my style is again, get you acquainted with something easy that's like plug and play. You understand it, you get familiar with it. Then as you become a master of Streamlabs, then eventually you can make that switch to OBS in the future. Because again, Streamlabs and OBS aren't that different. So if you get good with Streamlabs and master it, you will be able to make that switch to OBS Studio in the future. Anyways, the point is to get you up and running so you can get the streaming and have fun. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is go to Streamlabs website. Once there, we're gonna download Streamlabs by clicking this button right here. Once Streamlabs is downloaded, Let's go ahead and run it. You can install Streamlabs anywhere you want. For me, under C program file, Streamlabs OBS, this directory is fine for me, but you can put it anywhere you want. Once it's done installing, click finish and check the run Streamlabs desktop box right here because we're gonna go ahead and open up and get started. Okay, when you first open up Streamlabs, it should look something like this. So there are two ways of connecting your Twitch or YouTube or Facebook gaming account. I'm gonna show you both, but I'm gonna recommend one of them. So the older way that takes a few more steps and in my opinion, isn't as thorough in getting you connected is this way and I'm gonna show you. So here's how you do the older way with more steps. Basically you go down to the settings wheel, bottom left hand corner, click it. You're gonna click on stream. Here you'll see stream type service which youtube facebook restream twitter these other ones server right and then your stream key so basically to go live you need a stream key the stream key is what connects the platform you're streaming to your broadcast software 
So for me, if I want to stream live on Twitch, I need to put that stream key in here. If I want to go live on YouTube, I need to put the YouTube stream key here. If I want to go live on Facebook, I would need to put the Facebook stream key in here. Hopefully it makes sense. Since I'm streaming on Twitch, I'm going to get the Twitch stream key. Here's how you get your Twitch stream key. Basically, you want to open a browser, go to Twitch, twitch.tv. On the top right, you should see your account icon. Go ahead and left click on that. Then you're going to go to create your dashboard. Left click on that. On the left hand side, you're going to see a bunch of stuff here. Go down to settings, left click that. Under settings, you're going to see all this. You're going to click stream, left click it. Up here is your stream key. You're going to go ahead and copy it. Come back down to Streamlabs. And within the box, paste it, click done. Now the issue with this is that yes, your Twitch account is connected, but there's a few benefits you don't get to this. And to name two of the benefits is one, your notification feed that you usually would display here if you connect your account the second way I'm about to show you, and the chat on the right hand side. So now you're not gonna get a chat window or notification feed if you go live, even though we're connected. I'll even prove it to you. So if we go live right now, just with our basic setup, go live anyway, because I don't have any scenes or sources added. Nothing. Even with going live with your stream key connected, a chat box and your mini feed still not populate. Now the second way, which I recommend for Streamlabs is this way. So here's what we're gonna do. Just like the first way, you go down to the settings wheel here, left click that. And instead of clicking on one of these on the left hand side, you're gonna click log in. Basically this way is gonna connect your account with far less steps and give you all these features. So once you're on this screen, you're gonna basically select which platform you're streaming to. You got Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and I believe Trovo. There's other options like TikTok, I guess Live and Nemo TV. I've never heard of these two, but I guess you can also go live on TikTok. Now I stream from Twitch. So I'm gonna click on the Twitch icon. Next, you should see a box that pops up like this. Under the username section, you're going to put your Twitch username, Mine's Long TTV. Next, put in your password. Now for me, when I log in, it asks for a token. It may or may not ask for a token for you when you first sign in, but the settings I have enabled, it asks for a token. So if you get a request for a token, put it in. Next screen, you should see a box that looks like this. Go ahead and click authorize. Once authorized, you're now going to see a few things pop up. You notice on the left hand side, some things appeared here, some stuff appeared here. Now here is the mini feed I was talking about. You see what this mini feed is, is just a past events or current events if you're live streaming and you get to see what has happened, all right? This person followed me two days ago. This person followed me nine days ago. If you have a stream that a lot is going on, like people are subbing, people are donating, using bits, all kinds of stuff, you're gonna see that all here. So let's say like you say, hey, BR back, I'm gonna take a break. And then during that short break, you have people that sub, people to follow, people donate, bits, and basically, you know, those notifications usually only last a few seconds up on the screen and then they're gone. When you come back and sit down at your desk, you get to see what has happened while you're gone. So that's the benefit of that feed. The second benefit, click that arrow out. This is your stream chat right here. Now the benefit of having your stream chat here on the right hand side, all this is in one place and on one screen. So your notifications, your chat box are all right here. And if you have Streamlabs on a second monitor, you can see all this happen just on one screen. 
And the benefit of seeing your stream chat is of course interacting with your viewers and which good streamer etiquette is to reply and interact with your viewers, right? When you're live and you're not gonna be able to do that unless you see people talking. A two monitor setup, this is probably gonna benefit you with this. A benefit of having Streamlabs interface set up where you don't have notifications or your chat here would be if you're using a different window to be your chat and notifications for people that might have a third monitor or people who have a single monitor set up and use their phone through the Twitch app to look at chat and notifications. You know, and another possible benefit, but you would have to run tests to see would be if you don't have the feed or chat window here, Streamlabs could possibly be utilizing less resources because you have less integrations displayed within this window. If you don't connect your account to where you have your feed and chat here, the only other option would be by going to twitch.tv, going to your creator dashboard, and viewing the chat and notifications inside of Stream Manager. Now, my recommendation if you're on a two monitor setup would be to integrate your platform into Streamlabs. And again, for me, that'd be Twitch, but for you, it could be YouTube or Facebook. And the reason why I would go that route as it's probably less resource intensive to have Streamlabs open with the chat and notifications versus having a window open via Chrome or Firefox or even Edge as window browsers do take up a lot of resources and Streamlabs is probably more optimized to handle a chat window and notification window versus you having this dashboard open. Now there is a third recommendation. If you have a three monitor set up, then it might be better to disable the integrations of the chat window notifications to possibly save resources up on this interface by having this Streamlabs on one monitor and then on your third monitor, have this window open where it focuses on chat and notifications. And then you also have control over your quick actions here. In a future video, we can go over what these quick actions are inside of the stream manager. Now, if you're on a single monitor setup, that's gonna be really hard to watch chat and monitor your notifications by alt tabbing. So the solution for that is actually to watch your chat and notifications on another device, like your cell phone. You see, Twitch actually has something called the Stream Manager built in inside the Twitch app. Within the Twitch app, if you open it up, you can go to Stream Manager, and this way you can view your notifications and chat directly from your phone. Okay guys, so that's going to conclude this video. I hope you found this video helpful and instructional. Now this video is meant for beginners, so if you're a seasoned vet, be nice and chat. So going over what we talked about. So there's a few ways you can go about setting up your Streamlabs. Remember, you can connect to your account. You can choose to not connect to your account. You can choose to not connect to your account and use a different window for your chat notifications. Or if you have a single monitor, remember you don't need to be looking at Streamlabs because you're going to be focusing on your gameplay. So you can use your phone for all of that. If you found this video helpful and you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments. I would appreciate any feedback because that would help me out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Do me a favor and also subscribe and turn your notifications on so you know when the next video goes out. Make sure to follow me on all my socials, which will be down in the description. Make sure to join the Discord. Link for that is also in the description below. And remember, I stream Tuesday, Thursday during the week and on the weekends. We try to go live around 7 p.m. Pacific time. But yeah, I would love for you to stop by the stream, pop in, say hi. You don't have to stay long, just drop by. So with that being said, I hope to either see you in my next stream or the next video. Woo! You see that, baby?